now let's talk about the AWS Snow family. So it represents a highly secure portable devices that has two use cases within AWS. Either it's uh, used to collect uh, and process data at the is or to migrate data in and out of the AWS. So we have uh, we have two use cases of data migration. And for this, uh, we have three different types of uh, three different types of devices within the Snow family. We have the Snow Con, uh, then we have the Snowball S, and then we have the Snow Mobile. And uh, for the second use case, like the S computing, we have a Snow Cone, and uh, the we have the Snowball Snowball S. So we'll uh, we'll first uh, tackle the data migration uh, subject, and uh, then the S computing we'll be having a look at. So why do we why do we why do we want to do the data migration with uh, AWS Snow family? Okay. So well, if you look at the time it takes to transfer a lot of data over the network, it can take a lot of time. So for example, if you want to transfer 100 terabytes uh, of uh, 100 terabytes of data over one gigabyte per second, uh, one gigabyte per second network line, it will take us around 12 days to achieve it. Okay, and so obviously if we do a petabyte scale. If you do a petabyte scale here, it will take forever and so on, okay? So as we can see, sometimes we just wanna do, uh, like do uh, that to get a, a, get AWS fast, a faster speed. And the challenge is that sometimes on top of, that sometimes comes uh, on top of like the having a small network transfer, like the, you have limited connectivity, limited bandwidth, for transferring data over the network and may cost you some money. It's not free to use a network. It could be uh, uh, it could be that also the bandwidth is shared. For example, if you download a video from AWS uh, and you download 10 terabytes of data, maybe you are going to block your entire office network because you are maximizing the bandwidth within your office and then maybe the connection is not stable enough so you have to retry and so on. So all of these reasons make a case for a snow family so the snow family are offline devices that allow you to perform data migration so aws will send you an actual physical device by the post office and then you load your data onto it and then send it back to aws so the rule of thumb is that if it takes more than a week to transfer data over the network then you should use a snowball device then you should use a snowball device if it is taking more than a week to transfer the data for example so to uh, like uh, really explain how that works, let's take an example. Let's take an example here. Um, if we wanted to directly upload a file into Amazon S3, we have the client send the data into Amazon S3. Very easy, right? But uh, with the Snow family, for example, or with a Snowball device, the clients request the Novel device. Uh, we receive it via the post. AWS will deliver the device to us and we load the data directly onto the devices locally and then we ship back the device to AWS into an AWS facility. I'm sorry if the few were not available for a few seconds. Okay, then when you have uh, sent that device into a, uh, to AWS into an AWS facility, they will take the device and they will plug it into their own infrastructure and then data will be imported or exported based on what you want to do uh, and like an Amazon S3 bucket, but uh, you are uh, good to go. So really it's a way to transfer data to AWS, but through the physical, not the network route. So now what sort of the devices do we have? We have the Snowball as uh, then, you know, for, and the Snowball is a huge box. Uh, as you can see, and it is going to uh, be used to move terabytes or petabytes of data out to the AWS and it's going to be an alternative to moving data over the network. And uh, how we have seen, uh, how we have seen the like, we are going to pay per data transfer job and the interface within the Snowball is, is going to provide a block storage or Amazon S3 uh, compatible object storage. So we have two flavors for the Snowball as we have the Snowball is storage optimized which is going to give us the 80 terabyte of hardware of uh, hardware disk capacity which works for us like uh, for block volume or S3 compatible object storage 
and we have the snowball is compute optimized which is going to give us like 42 terabytes of hdd capacity so really if you want to have more storage obviously we want to get the flavor that is called snowball is storage optimized so so uh, snowball is all storage optimized that is the 80 terabyte compared to the uh, snowball is compute optimized that is the 40 terabyte 40 terabytes so the use case for the for a snowball is or uh, for data transfer so for uh, if so far is to do a large data cloud migration uh, to decommission a data center or maybe to do disaster recovery by uh, backing up your data into AWS. So that's it for the snowball is now the second option is the AWS snow cone and snow cone is like the cute uh, little name uh, because it is a cute little thing also. So this is much a smaller device as we can see, uh, we can see an Ethernet port on it. A snow, so a snow cone is much smaller than a snowball is and this is a small portable computing anywhere, rugged and secure and it can withstand harsh environments. So it can go in desert, it can go in, in the water. It's really, really light and uh, secure. Uh, so this device is going to be used for is computing, storage and data transfer, but obviously of much smaller, smaller size. And as such, you can store about eight terabytes of storage on a snow cone. So much less, about 10 times less than the snowball is a storage optimized device. So you should uh, use a snow cone where a snowball does not fit. So for example, in a space uh, constant environments, you can even put a snow cone on top of a drone. If you wanted to, uh, you must provide your own battery and cables and it can send back to AWS offline. Or you can even connect it to a network uh, and it will use AWS data sync to send data uh, back to over, back to over the network. So imagine you have a snow cone into an environment that doesn't have any network connectivity. It will collect the data, collect and collect the data and uh, then you go back home. Uh, you go to your data center, you take the snow cone and you plug it into the data center and automatically data is being transferred to AWS or you can just send it back again offline to AWS. And uh, so the, you have the two options with the snow cone. You can use the data sync or you can send us back to the AWS facility. Then, then a snowmobile, it's an actual truck. So when they announced it, they actually took a truck on the stage to show that it was an actual truck. So uh, what is going to, uh, so that is going to transfer the data. And so with a snowmobile, you can transfer exabytes of data. Uh, so one exabyte is like a thousand petabyte. I is uh, and uh, that is the 1 million terabyte and each snowmobile will have 100 petabytes of capacity. Each snowmobile will have 100 petabytes of capacity. Uh, so if you wanted to reach one exabyte of data, you need to order 10 snowmobile. So it's high security, it's a, it's a temperature control, had GPS, 25, 24 by 7 video surveillance. So it's quite a secure way to transfer your data and it's a better use case then a snowball if you start transferring more than 10 petabytes of data. So uh, as a summary for uh, data migration, we have three options. We have a snow cone, a snowball as and a snow mobile. Uh, and each comes uh, with uh, different storage capabilities. So eight terabytes, uh, 80 terabyte and uh, 100 petabyte. The migration size that's recommended by AWS is a snow cone is uh, up to 24 terabytes uh, for a snowball edge it's up to a petabyte and uh, and it's uh, offline because you have to send it back to AWS and for a snowball it has uh, use cases up to exabytes of data so data sync isn't is pre-installed on the snow cone uh, because you can plug into the network and uh, have data sync send the data over the network to AWS as well so and for the snowball edge you can do a storage clustering you can put up to 15 snowball is together to increase the storage size. Okay, so so how do we use a snow family device? So well, you request a device from the console for delivery, and we'll see this in the hands-on. And then we install the snowball client, and or we use AWS Ops Hub that we'll see in this lecture on your servers. Uh, then we connect the snowball to the servers and start copying the files using the client. And then we ship back the device when we are ready. It will go straight to the right AWS facility. Thanks to like the E ink marker. 
and the data will be loaded onto an S3 bucket and then the snowball will be completely wiped according to the highest security measures so that's for the data, mi data migration and that was originally one and only use case for the snowball devices but the second uh, use case is now for the snow family is called the is computing and so is computing is when you process data while it's being created at an edge location so what is an edge location well an edge location is anything that really doesn't have internet or that is far away from a cloud so for example if you have a truck on the road or if you have a ship on the sea or a mining station underground all these things can be called as locations because they can produce data but they may not necessarily have internet connectivity so either a limited connectivity or no internet access or no access to computing power and so you may still want to run computation data processing at these locations and for this we need edge computing and so to do edge computing we can order a snowball edge device or a snowcon and have it embedded into these edge locations and start doing edge computing so the use cases of edge computing is to pre-process data to data to uh, machine learning at the edge so without it going back to the cloud transport media streams in advance and eventually if need uh, b if you need to transfer the data back into aws you can ship back the device for your snow cone or your snowball snowball is so really you start processing the data very close to where it's being created and then you ship it back to aws so for is computing what do we have here okay so we have a snow cone and it comes with two cpus four gigabytes of memory has wired or wireless access so wi-fi it's powered by USB-C and an optional battery. And then for the Snowball, is it's a compute optimized. So we have two different flavors again. Uh, so the compute optimized one has 52 virtual CPUs and 208 gigabytes of RAM uh, and an optional GPU if you want to do video processing or machine learning. We have 42 terabyte of usable storage. And uh, for the Snowball, is that is the storage optimized. Uh, we have 42 CPU so less and uh, 80 80 gigabytes of ram ram uh, so again less ram as well and uh, we have objects storage clustering available for the storage and all of these devices can run either ec2 uh, instances within them or lambda function using the service called aws iot green grass and if you do edge computing then you may want to have these devices in your facilities in your trucks in your boats are uh, for a very long time and so therefore you have long-term deployment options where you can get a discounted pricing if you borrow these devices for one or three years so finally uh, finally for the snow family there's uh, there is ops hub so historically when you were using these devices you needed a cli so command line interface tool to deal with them and it was very very difficult and so AWS recognizes that and so they have created Ops Hub. So which is, a, which is a software that you install on your computer or laptop. So it's not something you use on the cloud. It's something that you have to download on your computer. And then once it's connected, it's going to give you a graphical interface to connect to your snow devices and configure them and use them, which is very, very handy. So this allows you to do unlocking and configuring single or cluster devices are uh, transferring files launching and managing instances so you see two instances two, in two instances running or uh, snow family devices monitor de device matrix and launch uh, compatible aws services on your devices for example like ec2 instances use data sync for uh, network file system so that it's that's it for the snow family and uh, next uh, For improving the transfer performance uh, for your SNOW family devices, there's a list of recommendations that AWS provides uh, from the most impact, impactful to the least impactful ones. Uh, so the most impact, impactful is to perform multiple write operations at a time. Okay, from multiple terminals, uh, when you transfer files to your SNOW device, then you need to transfer small files in batches. So if you have a lot of small files instead, put them together, create a zip file, and then when, then when the zip is at least one megabyte of size then upload it into the snow family device don't perform any other operations on the files during the transfer 
uh, reduce the local network uses eliminate any unnecessary uh, like ho hops hops uh, so directly uh, connect the SNO device to the computer and then the data transfer rates like they're using the file interface is typically between 25 megabytes to like 40 megabytes per second but if you need faster data transfer than this uh, then there is something called Amazon S3 adapter for the snap is Amazon S3 adapter for a snowball uh, which is a data transfer rate of uh, typically 250 megabyte per second uh, to 400 megabyte per second so these recommendations together especially the first two and then the data and the S3 adapter for a snowball is going to be the answer for the one question like for the improving the transfer performance and the recommendation given by the AWS so and this is all about the snow family and all right and this is i hope you liked it and i will see you in the next lecture